Hey everybody, Eric Schweitzer here, and welcome to The Gamer Aces, the first and only award show all about the wonderful world of video games. Today I am joined by two astute gamers, George Foster. Hello, hello. And the gamer editor-in-chief, Stacey Henley. Hello, hello. Today we will be giving out five awards, all in the category of video game characters. But before we get into that, Stacy, can you tell us a little bit about how you came up with this crazy idea to give awards to video games? Um, so it was in the kind of aftermath of one us doing our game of the year lists. We've always had a pretty good spread. This year, Baldur's Gate won because it won like pretty much everyone's game of the year. But the two years before, we had. Uh, if we had Citizen Sleeper and then The Forgotten City. So I think at the gamer, we've always looked for games that maybe go beyond the headlines. Um, so I felt like doing an award ceremony uh, would be a good way to celebrate some of the other things that get a little bit overlooked. We ourselves, three of us and two other editors at the gamer, did some predictions for the game awards uh, last December. And when we were doing that, we all came up with our own categories. And as I was doing that, I felt that like there was just a lot of categories that the Game Awards and really all of the other sorts of shows, whether it be the um, election that the Steam Award does, but then it's mass voted and you get things like Starfield winning most was it innovative gameplay. Innovative, Is that what Starfield yeah, won? Yeah. Yep. So I wanted some awards that celebrated the somewhat underappreciated parts of... Uh, of gaming, uh, but that also spoke to the sorts of things that we look for at the gamer. So today we're doing the character awards, um, but we also have awards on presentation, how a game is presented and the different um, elements that combine to make a game special. And then we have awards for features, which are for specific um, parts of games that uh, we felt stood out this year. Games are often looked at especially at the end of year awards in a bit of a collective way. We look at, mm. um, Baldur's Gate is, is great because it's 300 hours long, it's got all this stuff in, but I we don't often stop and zoom in on what those smaller things are that make a game great. And I think when you do that, that's when some of the smaller games that we've always championed get to hold their own a little bit because um, there are some indie games that you can't play for as long as you play Baldur's Gate. They don't have as right. much to them as the likes of um, Baldur's Gate. But when you zoom in on some of the specific elements of it, even though, yeah, Baldur's Gate's very popular, it's very good at a lot of things, and it will feature a lot in our rewards, um, there's just something about these uh, these characters, particularly in this award, that stand out as being more than just appearing in a big game. Yeah. That's very exciting. Uh, I can't wait to get into it, but we have our first world premiere. <laughs> La ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Barbara Gordon, Woo. a sweet, sweet tabby cat. There you go. There's your premiere. Mascot. Okay. Mascot for the awards. <laughs> get out of here. Uh, all right, Stacey, will you tell us about our first category? Yes. So we are in the character awards, and our first category here is best supporting performance. Um, this category really is probably one of the most self-explanatory ones, the ones that we've got. This is for the best performance, either um, Vogel or Mocamp, of any character who appeared in a 2023 video game. We've nominated by the performance themselves. Uh, in most of the awards, we have three nominees. But when there were ties in the nominations, we've gone up to four, and in some cases, even five. But this mm. time, there are just three. And the nominees are? Uh, we have Ralph Innocent as Sid in Final Ooh. Fantasy 16. We have Neil Newbin as Asterian in Baldur's Gate 3. And we have David Harewood as Wallen Dahl, Mr. Dahl, in Alan Wake 2. Oof, strong. How do we feel? I know who's won all of them, but you don't. There's mystery for you guys. Only me knows. Um, so... Two of these I nominated, so I already feel pretty strongly about this category, but I want want to mention some that didn't yep. make the cut here. One, I think, 
won't come to a lot of people's mind, but Tony Todd as Venom in Spider-Man 2. Yeah, yeah, great nominee. It's, I forgot about that myself. It's such a great Venom that you sort of... It, it, it's such a perfect Venom that you almost forget that it is a performance because it's just exactly what you think Venom should be, but he, just, he just nails it. Yeah, excellent yep. Venom. Um, I think Venom was a sole nominee for you, and one of the um, people that I nominated was also a sole nominee, because um, I had Caroline Farber, who was Lilith in Diablo 4. A lot of things that Diablo yeah. didn't do very well, but uh, I felt the performance of Lilith was a standout. Part, really part of the reason for these awards. I know the three games there were very highly represented, but um, yeah, something like Lilith's performance, Caroline Farber's performance as Lilith in Diablo 4 was what stood out to me. Yeah, I think as a as a group of gamers, um, we really didn't have much love for Diablo 4 this year. I had no. Diablo in uh, a handful of categories um, for our awards, uh, but yeah, I think that there that there's characters and story elements of that game that are like top notch, top notch Blizzard storytelling that uh, really got overlooked in all of everything else that was so great this year. Yeah, big yeah. But yeah. George, George, did you have any other uh, supporting performances that you think could be here? I did. So I had Nashir Dalal as Bodakuna in Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Just a phenomenal yeah. villain. So yeah. good. One of the best scenes in the game is his twist, I guess. Spoilers if you haven't played Star Wars Jedi Survivor. <laughs> um, and I also had James McCaffrey as Alex Casey in Alan Wake 2. James McCaffrey and Sam Lake. Yeah. Oh yeah, I guess it would be kind of a combination right this was actually yeah. it's quite interesting actually in the nominees because I, I would say best performance would be one of the people and the way we voted because obviously the first year we've done this some people did vote for casey and lake sorry for um mccaffrey and lake as casey and some people just voted for mccaffrey because it was mccaffrey's performance i guess i guess you could have yeah. voted for just lake i don't think anyone yeah, did it's, vote for it's both. On yeah it should be both that that's true i would i would credit both but those were two I picked, and then I had uh, Ralph Innocent as Sid for Final Fantasy as well, because he is just incredible. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the three that we have here. The, these yeah. are... It'll be, it'll be, it'll easy, be easy to argue these are the three best, yeah. Yeah, I actually um, did... I nominated um, Devorah Wild for all his I just want to shout out quickly, rather than Asterian. Um, I feel there were so many performances in Baldur's Gate. I'm really looking forward already to doing these awards next year when we don't have a Baldur's Gate-sized game. <laughs> right, yes. Knowing how much love for Baldur's Gate our team has overall, um, it, it's going to be easy to default to that for any category that comes up. Um, uh, I think my pick between these three would have to be Warlandor, though. What a what an amazing character and a haunting performance that is. That was my vote. Yeah, yeah see, I'm sidled away on this one. Um, <laughs> we're both wrong. The winner was Neil Newman. <laughs> of course, yes. He got just over of half the votes. Um, there is quite a good spread of Baldur's not winning everything, but um, I think yeah. Um, Neil Newman won at the Golden Joysticks as well. Won best performance overall. The game was doesn't split between support and lead, but also won there. Um, and won here. What what can you say? Sexy it's vampire, the ultimate Rizzler. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't say that. That's what we can not say. You just say <laughs> um, um, what is it about this character? I think for me, it's that there's quite a lot of layers to Asterion because most of these kind of RPG games, they have the um, mean guy, right? Asterion's mean. You want him to like you, but most of the time he's kind of he's mean. He likes it when you're mean to people, and he's mm. also quite i guess cocky sometimes standoffish with you he tries to bite you his position i think um we interviewed neil newman a while ago when he said he expected people to kill him better people to kill us during the game because he's so unlikable yeah. he felt um but then as you go through the game with him especially into act three i'll try and not be too heavily on spoilers but you know you see um his origins as a vampire you see a lot of kind of sensitivity around that he touched on this briefly in his game of the year uh, sorry the Game Awards speech, um, but like when Baldur's Gate won Game of the Year, he was quickly shoved off stage. But I think a lot hey, of them um, from the from the side, like yeah, I think a lot of um, 
you know, sexual assault survivors related to hysteria and the, the, the kind mm. of arc that he has. So there's there's a lot of um, sensitivity beyond being the coolest character out of the year, which I, th- I think um, is the instant appeal of hysteria is that it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah, certainly the character with the most depth uh, mm-hmm. out of the nominees and probably any that, that we discussed here. Uh, again, um, I would say Liz Alpha, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> But no. Um, very good. Congratulations. Congratulations to Neil Neven. <laughs> you'll receive your check in the mail, Neil. <laughs> it's a, quite a sizable sum. I hope you'll be happy. <laughs> um, what is so our next, next category? We have best lead performance, which is similar to uh, best porn performance, pretty straightforward. It's best uh, performance by somebody who was in a leading role. And this mm-hmm. is one of those situations where we had a tie for the nominees. So we actually have four of them this time. Mm. And the nominees are? Uh, we have Ben Starr, yeah. friend of the site, as um, Clive Rossfield in Final Fantasy XVI. We have uh, Nudgy Jita as Miles Morales in Spider-Man yep. 2. Mm. We have Melanie Leibert as Saga Anderson in Alan Wake 2. And we have Amelia Tyler as the narrator in Baldur's Gate 3. Interesting. Really strong, really strong four. Um, interesting that we would have the narrator as a best lead performance. What do you think of that? Um, as the person who tallied the votes across both, because how we did this was we didn't have anyone shortlisted. We asked people for nominees um, in each category. Some people had Amelia Taylor in supporting. Some people had her in lead. I can see the logic for both. I think people went off playability. The narrator is the one who's kind of always there and Tav mm-hmm. doesn't say very much and there's so many different Tavs that it's hard to kind of in one um, mm. down as the as the lead, so but unless you're going to end up in a situation which I know the Oscars have had before, where there's no lead because everyone goes in supporting because no one wants to have been the um, the lead. I think yeah. it makes sense, but she did have some support in uh, best supporting as well. The interesting one. Mm-hmm. I can see it being both. But I think you know with what you just said, Stace. It makes sense to go for lead here. Even though there are a lot of a lot of nominees, she has a different role to um, you know, Neil Newman and Devorah Wild. I mean, yeah, it's the same. Um, I also nominated uh, Nick Apostolides for um, Leon. So did I. We were, I think we were the only two who did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it, it's not surprising that you forgot. It's just because it's a familiar role. He's played him before. Yeah. Lots of people have played Leon. Well, yeah. three people have played Leon, I guess. <laughs> He's played um, it best, though. It's just but it is it, it is so very good. Ago. It was such yeah. like mid start of the year. It just it goes, isn't it? I love Matt Mercer's Leon. Uh, pro- probably my favorite, but I I I'm not going to disagree with you that he is the best Leon, just because yeah. he really just owns it. the camp and just like <laughs> really just goes for it. I yeah. think that's such a fun character. Um, yeah, and a great performance. And then, um, you know, Alan Wake himself, right? Matthew Peretta and uh, uh, Ika? Ika, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th- I think some strong ones uh, this year. What do we think the ones that are there? I, I, I know what's coming, but what do we think the ones who are there? Yeah, I, fi- I find interesting that we went for Miles over Peter. I like don't. Really went for Peter. Yeah. I don't find anything interesting about that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it's a better performance, isn't it? I think, I think yes. it's a better performance, I yeah, suppose but... the interesting thing is Peter, you will know, was a birthday game awards. Yeah. That's um, true. Yep. I'd like to see I'd I'd love to know how we were split on that, like how many people voted for Yuri Lowenthal. Because I loved um, I thought his performance was great. Not very many. If, if we'd extended it to five or six he wouldn't have made the list. We, I mean, you know, he's a good actor. Um, I like him in a lot of roles. I was not convinced by this version of Spider-Man with all the changes that goes through. Like Eric said about Tony Todd, it's just Venom. Mm. Yeah. Most of the time, um, Yuri is just Peter. Mother's Midnight Sons, he's just Peter. It's great. This, because there was different things to the performance, didn't, just didn't quite land for me. I was, I was surprised he made the cut at the Game Awards. Yeah, that's fair. That's not terrible. It's I'd also sad. like to say one person who I nominated who isn't on the list, unfortunately, I'm sure you know where I'm going, is Cameron Monaghan. 
as Cal Kestis yes. in Jedi Survivor. Such a big step up from Fallen Order. Fallen Order, he was so I agree. nothing, and then in Survivor, he's great. And that's a lot, a lot of the writing and storytelling too, but... Yeah. The, the other interesting thing about Miles is that that performance is up against another Miles this year, because Spider-Verse. Yes. Yeah, yeah there's two There's two Miles... Um, yeah, so it should be in more. the kind of cultural uh, consensus. Yeah. Three Miles, Miles is very good. I think he is probably less popular as an individual. Um, yeah. <laughs> just overall, yeah. Yeah, I but the internet doesn't seem to be as big a fan of, of him. I don't necessarily get all of it. I don't claim to be a major part of the Spider-Verse fandom. But, <laughs> um, I, I know of all the characters in the movie, despite Miles being beloved, it seems to be the rest of the cast who gets a lot of this affection, which maybe affects things with Miles. For best lead here, I would go Ben Starr, Clive Rosfield. You know, You're so obvious. I know that's why that's part of my charm. <laughs> but when they first showed Final Fantasy 16, like it was so easy to assume he's just like this gruff, emo, angry man, and he's just the way Ben Starr plays him. He's so sweet and shy and emotionally charged. Like he's just steals the scene. I love him. Um. Well, then I'll have to go with uh, Melanie Liebert for Saga. I just really. Fell in love with that character. I loved the way that Saga approaches the strangeness of the world. There's a very obvious way you can do that character where they're just very confused by how strange everything is. And Saga isn't. Just Saga just really just accepts the reality of this world and deals with it. And I think that's such a more interesting way to, to do that character. Yeah, uh, I, I really like Saga. Yeah. Um, both wrong again. Uh, yeah. The winner for best new performance was Amelia Tyler as the narrator in Baldur's Gate. One half the votes. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay. I I really liked Amelia Tyler um, as the narrator. I think it's a really important underrated. I guess not that underrated. You voted for a part of the experience. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm just not as much of a old EG's head as everyone else so for me it's just yeah know. our team our team is uh huge in Baldur's into Gate Baldur's Gate, and george and i are just okay w with it <laughs> so we're not the best reps for for these particular awards so far but i respect it a lot and i know i, I i've played 10 hours and i know like i can see why people love it but it just hasn't gripped me as much as everyone else i'm gonna get back into it soon though so maybe yeah. i won't be converted okay what's our next one uh, our next category is best new character. This John, is for any character John, who first John. appeared. This is for any character who first appeared in a 2023 video game, uh, who hadn't appeared anywhere else in the other form media, and wasn't part of any previous video game. Uh, again, there was a time in the so we have four mm -hmm. this time. Uh, we have Chai from Hi-Fi Rush. We have Asterian from Baldur's Gate 3. We have Shadowheart from Baldur's Gate 3. And we have Saga Anderson from Alan Wake 2. The usual suspects hmm. at this point. <laughs> Three awards yeah. in. Who do I like out of this list? <laughs> I don't know. I will say, one my, one of my nominees was robbed. Uh, I put in the talking flower from Super Mario Wonder. I love that. Oh, that is, that's a funny one. Yeah, I, I put, loved it. I put in Turgle. Yeah, you did? Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> um, I didn't have that much variety here. I, I put in Karlak and Lazelle from Bollers Gate, neither who made the cut, but they came in. Yeah. And Richter Kai from Paranormal Sight. Oh, okay. I also had Lilith. Yes. I, I love Lilith. Yep. I am so happy to see Chai nominated. Like, any Hi-Fi Rush love, if you don't know, I am... It is one of my favourite games ever. Show the tattoo. I am not showing the tattoo. I have Christmas <laughs> week. <laughs> and I'm buff again, sure. But I love it. Uh, Chai is a big part of that. He is... I remember people had some like complaints about it kind of being like MCU jokes, like, well, that just happened. But it's not really like that. The humor's much more like Scott Pilgrim vs. the world, and Chai is like a big part of sure. that, I think. Should we roll into the uh, into the winner, since we've got yeah. just like these games uh, previously? I think we can guess. This was Saga for me, but... Um, who would you guess 
Asterian. Yeah, Asterian. Um, Asterian came third. Wow. What? Uh, the winner by a significant landslide was Chai. Yes! Wow! Go a win on. for Chai and a loss, the first loss of the night for Baldur's Gate. Shadow Hot was second. Um, I'm uh, so happy. Sorry, I was last, unfortunately. <laughs> um, from, now, this is, this is a really interesting one because that was best new character, okay? Our right. next category, uh, we have two left for the character awards. Our next category is best character. This is for any character who appeared in a 2022 video game. Didn't need to be new. Yep. All four nominees are new. They are ah, not yeah. the same nominees as the ones above. That is interesting. Don't how, quite how know do you think how that it happened. Yeah. Um, people um, voting specifically in best new, not knowing that a character was new or um, voting for different ones to kind of spread their favorites around. Don't know. I think it'll be interesting next year when we have a lot of big returning games. Um, just in the next month, we have uh, the new Yakuza, the new Tekken, the new Final Fantasy. A little bit more than a month now, but we have Dragon's Dogma. Um, don't actually know how loyal of a sequel that is, to be honest, but I, I think uh, we won't have a game like Bonus Game next year, basically. Yeah. Uh, the right. nominees are Asterian from Baldur's Gate, <laughs> Shadowheart from Baldur's Gate, Karlak from Baldur's Gate. Pleasant, yeah. It wasn't up for best new character, Karlak, uh, and Clive Rossfield from Final Fantasy 16. Also, I believe a new character, unless yep, he's appeared somewhere else yet, yeah, wasn't up for new character. Um, <laughs> in other interesting news, uh, there was one vote in it. And we have a joint second between the other three. This was by oh, far wow. the closest vote. I, I would love Clive to win. I don't think he will. But... He was within a vote, even if he's lost, he's within a vote. So there's no not thinking he, he will have. It's very close. Eric, any thoughts on who's here or who you had someone else? Uh, shout out to uh, Lorath uh, from Diablo 4, um, Ralph Innocent. Honestly, could have gone for performance yeah. as well. Um, such a cool character. Technically, not a new character, just because there shows up as like a little cameo in Diablo three. Yeah, but but really is a new character um, established in this one. Yeah, um, love that character. Uh, and Miles. Miles is a good one. Yeah, Miles. I think gets yeah. a lot of development in this one. In yeah, Spider-Man too. Um, I had Miles in. The next category, not to get ahead of ourselves. It was the only one who put him in there. But anyway, mm-hmm. best character. Remember, a vote in it. Uh, the winner of best character did not feature in best new character, despite being a new character. Uh, and it's Karlak from oh. Baldur's Gate 3. Who are, I nominated in both categories. Um, I think Karlak's an excellent character. Karlak's by far my favorite character in... Baller's Gates. I know you two on that end, so I'll take the floor. I like. didn't play far <laughs> enough to even meet Carla. <laughs> I like Carla from from what I've seen. Uh, Shadow Heart's my favorite though. It's yeah. not really been mentioned much. Shadow Heart was up for both the last two awards. Got to pay more attention. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not winning though. <laughs> no, she didn't win either of them. Um, within a vote. Uh, no, Carla's my favorite character in, in the game. I, I think she's. Uh, a little like a stereo, you meet and she's very much a, a trope at first. She's like this, you know, buff lady. She's angry. She's mm-hmm. hot. That's kind of the deal. But then um, there's a lot more tragedy to her. She reminds me, it's kind of a cliche to compare games with um, squad mate style relationships to Mass Effect. But she is the one who probably most reminds me of a Mass Effect character. I feel like her arc of um, becoming closer to her, her having a very default personality that works in all situations but then as you get to know a deeper changing reminds me a lot of um the way mass effect would build its characters as quite set tropes and then show you how they divert from those tropes the more you get to know them but if you mm-hmm. don't bother getting to know them and you stick with those tropes they're still well enough written within that mm. for them yeah. to shine so Carla. makes sense I respect it. Um, we have one more? We have one more in the character awards. Yes, we do. Uh, this is our fifth and final award for character. Uh, and it's unlike the other four, this is not 
just on a character because this is best relationship. Uh, mm. This is for any relationship, romantic, uh, platonic, or antagonistic between two characters or more in a video game in 2023. So this is for not best romance story, in terms of like we know relationship, but the connection between two specific characters. And we have three different games nominated, including a game that has not been mentioned so far in the awards that will come up more in future awards people who tune into the later ones uh our first nominee is clive and jill from final fantasy 16. uh our second nominee is shadowheart and lazelle from baldur's Mm -hmm. gate 3 Mm -hmm. and the hero and the princess from slay the princess oh baby gets on the ballot you've triggered my trap cards shamefully still have not played it i would love to just do an entire video for slay the princess uh man that that one is so interesting because uh no spoilies um that relationship is established the second the game starts but is different every second that you play the game (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> and different um, not just different from what you've experienced but different from what other people have experienced as well right yeah yeah it, that that's a really good point too because your your perception of the relationship between those characters is every is different for every person um that's a that's a really cool one i'm excited that uh we got enough votes for that some we have some secret love for slay the princess on the team it wasn't nearly one of the most celebrated games this year but i think enough of us got to it that we know that it's that one's really really yeah. special yeah. yeah and even though we mentioned about the characters it probably shines a little bit more in uh presentation and feature so it does feature a little bit more mm-hmm. does appear yeah. a little bit more in the in the later awards yeah who did you t- who did you two have the wasn't i was know. the only person at all out of everyone who <laughs> nominated um Miles and Haley from Spider Man, I think. Oh, that's a good one. The best relationship this year. I love the way those characters are written, the way they're presented on screen, um, how they relate to each other, and how both of them relate to the audience in completely different ways. The the creativity to have a character like Haley and give her something that's quite um, authentic without feeling preachy, basically. Um, Yeah. I, I put Haley up for best character as well. I just I, I love how they, I knew she would never ever have gotten on the ballot in there. But um, yeah, a lot of love for those two. I actually did nominate Clive and Jill. So did um, I. I just, I, I'm not in love with the storytelling in that game, but I think that they just have incredible chemistry. They do. Um, you want them to end up together <laughs> from the very beginning of that game um it's, and it's such cool a tease to see how the whole they... thing yeah as well. you're just yeah. waiting waiting the whole time um that's a very like that's a very sweet love story hmm. um i think they did really well um, what about you george i also had jill and clive and then i had harry and peter from spider-man 2 and then I, then I, I, really re- I believe like their dynamic as best friends hmm. i think it really sold you on that which really does make the last few hours of that game quite painful um and i also had callum merrin from dead eye survivor yeah return relationship developed yeah, I think a lot it, in this. it really evolves their characters especially cal actually no merrin equally but well, yeah both of them yeah. i actually i also had atma and Rhea from um space for the unbound which i've mentioned a lot this year and i've nominated a lot as well it doesn't get on the ballot in very many but uh that was that's a really cool game um well we've mentioned two of them but the winner for best relationship is at a canna uh shadow heart and lazelle from baldur's gate 3. haters gonna hate i need to stop making this face because it is it is good it's just (laughs) i think if you haven't played well enough it's difficult to see their relationship well because they're just two characters who don't really like each other at first you need to really earn that relationship a lot and i think most people who play baldur's gate will their relationship will be the person that they choose to romance, whether that be, mm-hmm. I think Shadowheart was the most popular, um, whether that be um, someone that they just bounce around the camp and have sex with a lot of different people, or whether that's someone that they form 
a deeper relationship with. That's probably the relationship that they see. But I think Shadowheart and Lizelle, it's probably transcended the game a little bit as well because the the the, um, the actors are very have a very natural chemistry when they do um, conventions things together, so they become kind of part of the fandom. Um, I think I think it represents Baldur's Gate pretty well. It, it's won a lot of the awards here. It is good at characters. I think we'll see some variety next year, but uh, Shadowhunt is elf. For, for me, if not for you two, are fitting winners of that category. Yeah, I, again, I respect it. I wish I wish I could be as excited. We, uh, which is I a mean, dire thought to end on. <laughs> yeah, the Golden Baldies. Congratulations, <laughs> Baldur's Gate for sweeping our first group um very fun we'll be back tomorrow for our next set of awards what is our category for tomorrow Susie? uh presentations these are things that are different styles of um writing and visuals and those sorts of categories we have a full write-up for our awards linked down in the description don't forget to like subscribe hit that bell visit us at thegamer.com that's the gamer no space